At 12 o'clock, Oklahoma City reported cloudy skies with a temperature of 74 degrees, a dew point at 70, giving us a relative humidity of 87%. Winds are from the south at 20, gusting 2 to 30 miles an hour, and the pressure was falling at 29.77. Hey, I want to welcome you to the National Severe Storms Laboratory here in Norman, Oklahoma, and we're going to take a little tour of the Storm Prediction Center. the uh, lead forecaster desk and the uh, lead forecaster is responsible for all the products that come out of the storm prediction center. He issues severe thunderstorm and tornado watches which cover portions of states for time periods on the order of six hours and we do that for the 48 lower states and that's 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And he al also um, again, oversees all the other activities, which we'll show you here. Over on this, in this area, this forecaster is what we call the outlook forecaster. He is constantly combing the, the uh, states for areas where it will thunder and also where severe thunderstorms are likely. And these products go out and it's known as convective outlooks and they're used by the field offices, emergency managers and any other sophisticated users to get idea for both the first 24 hours and also the 24 to 48 hour period of where thunderstorms and severe thunderstorms may occur. And coming over to the, this is known as the mesoscale forecaster. Over here um, he is focusing more on the next uh, zero to six hours where thunderstorms and especially severe thunderstorms may occur and looking for where they may develop. We're trying to get a heads up on where they'll develop and where they'll quickly become severe. And he works hand in hand with the lead forecaster on trying to determine areas where severe thunderstorm or tornado watches may be issued. Again, the difference is we're looking at the big picture for the next 24 to 48 hours across the whole U.S. The local offices are the ones that would issue the severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings for the next 30 to 60 minutes for specific counties in the local area. We again are looking for larger time scales and aerial coverage of severe thunderstorms and providing guidance to the local field offices of the National Weather Service. What we'd like to do now is maybe take a closer look at the Childress area in northwest Texas and see what kind of potential there will be for severe thunderstorms as you head out today. Any particular reason you chose children? Um, I think it was just because it was brought up in the meeting. Okay. Yeah, it looks it looks like somewhere along the Texas Oklahoma border in here. Um, okay, we've got. Just load it up and see where the dry line is located at this okay. point. Okay, the dry line is. Okay, we had the we had the moist air across eastern New Mexico this morning, but uh, the uh, dry westerly flow has now blasted across the uh, Texas Panhandle. We'll go ahead and slow this down for you. Now it looks like the dry line is located somewhere east of Liberal. It actually looks like it's gone between Garden City and Dodge City. 
is down along the eastern part of the Texas Panhandle and then down towards the Midland area. So dew points have now dropped into the 30s indicating quite dry air and are remaining quite moist here along the Oklahoma-Texas border. So that looks like a good area from say wet southwest and, and uh, west central Kansas down along the western edge of this broken cloud area down into west west central Texas and that would probably be the best area for initial thunderstorm development say four or five o'clock this afternoon and looking at some of the wind profiles this indi these blue arrows indicate the strength of what we, we like to look for for supercell storms is a lot of increase in wind speeds with height and also some turning to those winds say from southerly to westerly and these d just measure the magnitude of that change and it looks fairly favorable for supercells. So any thunderstorms we get along the dry line should be supercells and certainly could produce tornadoes given the amount of moisture. But uh, looking at, at uh, other features in the upper atmosphere, it, the storm should remain rather isolated. So let's go ahead and stop this. All right. Yeah, you You've got 70 dew points all the way in the southwest Oklahoma and around Childress and it looks like there's a little bit of Q, cumulus clouds forming here and there. But um, if we go to a, let's go to a model sound in here and see what we can find as far as, I would think that it's not going to just explode quite yet, It'd probably wait for You'll be able to get there in time. What do you do here? What's your position? I'm doing all kinds of things. A lot of uh, web pages and a lot of PR work for you know various schools, give tours for schools, and and uh, various people that come in, answer phone calls, letters, emails. We get um, a lot of emails and letters. People wanting to know various things. So. How long have you been with the storms lab? Um, a little more than a year. Little, about a year and a month. Did you have to go through a lot of school to get in here? Yeah, um, most people here have uh, at least two degrees. Bachelor's degree in meteorology and then they work to get um, graduate degrees. Um, I got my master's from St. Louis University. Mm -hmm. And then uh, several people have PhDs as well. 